Hello everybody, thank you for watching HM Studio. In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips that make your renders look better. I saved the best one for the last, so make sure to watch the whole video. Before we start, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Okay, let's start. What is our goal in the ArcBiz industry? We're trying to recreate the reality, so our best reference will be the reality itself. Then before starting any of your project, you need to gather some reference images so you could create the details as they are in the real world. Are you working on an exterior project? Just take your camera or mobile phone and take a walk for 20 minutes and you can take hundreds of photos. Or if you're working on an interior scene, you can just look around you right now, at your office or your home, wherever you are. Just take some photos of every detail that you can find, also from different angles to find out how materials are reacting to the light. By the way, we're not talking about any specific software or render engine. You can apply these on any application that you're familiar with and they'll work just fine. This seems to be very easy, but it's very important and effective. There's no such a thing as a razor sharp edge in the nature, well, except the razor itself, but uh, you need to always chamfer all the edges because it'll increase the realism and also you will get a very nice specular at the edges, which is great. Always try to use high quality textures. It doesn't matter if you do the perfect lighting, without high quality textures, you cannot get realistic results. Thankfully, there are a lot of websites like Polygon, Arrowway, and Evermotion that you can download any kind of premium textures that you need. And they usually are coming with all the necessary maps like Specular, Bump, and Normal. So they're easy to use and you can get some realistic results out of them. Do you want to mess up your renders? Well, use repetitive textures. But jokes aside, always use seamless textures. If your texture is not seamless, you can fix it in Photoshop, Pixplant, or any other photo editing software that you're familiar with. I'll make a video about that one in the near future. You need to adjust your UVW map based on real-world scale. The human eye can easily point out if you're using very small or large textures, and even objects as well. You can easily run a search on Google or, as I said, look at your reference photos to find out about the real-world scale of any texture or object. Nothing is perfect in this world. Fingerprints on a glass, cracks in the ceiling, a crooked picture frame on the wall, and this kind of stuff. Our brain has been trained for so many years and expects all of these imperfections. So when you're trying to avoid that and make everything super sharp and clean, or when you're perfectly arranging all the seats around the dining table with equal space and rotation, you cannot get realistic results. No surface has a uniform glossiness all around it. Even a clean glass has some fingerprints or dust on it and the specular map will help you to create that kind of effect. This is a major rule in the process of making a realistic render. Let's say that you're applying a material with a single texture to a set of wooden floor planks. An obvious pattern may appear, which makes the rendering unrealistic. The UVW randomizer map allows you to apply random offset, rotation and scale to your textures and procedural maps assigned to different objects. That way you can get a different textural look on each element of your object, which leads your render to look more realistic. No matter which type of camera are you using, whether it's your mobile phone or if it's a pricey DSLR camera, you'll still get that effect in your photos. And you already know that all of these tiny details are improving your render quality. So, don't neglect to use depth of field, even if the effect is very subtle. For example, look at the difference in these two renders. It makes a huge difference. What is composition? Composition is the structure of your photo. It's positioning the objects in the frame in such a way that the viewer's eye is automatically drawn to the most interesting or significant area of the capture. It's composition that delivers your message and defines your style. 
So, there are several rules of composition that you need to learn. I'll show you one of them and then I'll introduce a max script which makes everything much easier for you. One of the most well-known rules of photographic composition and one of the most important things you'll learn in photography is the rule of thirds. It involves breaking any image you want for rendering into thirds, horizontally and vertically, so that you have nine equal parts. Within the grid, you'll notice that these lines intersect at four distinct points. There are your points of interest. Basically, the rule of thirds states that if you place the main subject of your photo in the top, bottom, left or right section of the grid, you'll snap a perfect picture every time. There's a max script called uh, Image Comp Helper, which contains seven different compositions. By selecting any of them, you'll get some lines inside the viewport as kind of a render effect. So no geometry will be created and no camera is needed. They will interactively adjust to any image aspect and are visible in the active viewport. So switching the viewport will also move the lines there. So with this script, everything will be so much easier for you. I've put the link into the description if you want to download it. Obviously, I cannot cover everything about that in this video, so I'm making a more comprehensive video about this. Okay guys, thank you for being with me during this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Stay healthy and see you next time.